Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and today I'm doing an unboxing and rambling of Lords of Ragnarok. This is mostly a pristine unboxing. There's no shrink on these. These are pre-production copies. I don't have everything, so I am missing. I think I'm missing the uh, Seas of Aegir expansion, maybe some extras. We'll, we'll get into it. There's a bunch of stuff to go into. As usual, we do have our coffee and our knife ready to go over here, and we will... Um, We'll be talking about things. We'll be we'll be rambling a bit. This is a one of those things. If you're new to the channel, first of all, please like, subscribe, all that stuff. But additionally, my unboxing and ramblings are just that. Will we talk about Lords of Ragnarok? Yes, we will. Have I played Lords of Ragnarok? Yes, I have. Do I like Lords of Ragnarok? Yes, yes, a little bit. But and before before we move on, I know I gave the game a five out of five. When I say a little bit, it's in jest. It's not like meant to be like. What do you mean a little bit? But like whatever. Either way, I like Lords of Ragnarok. We'll talk about Lords of Ragnarok, but we'll also talk about other things because why not? Anyways. Coffee notwithstanding, let's move these other things off to the side. We got stretch goals, we got terrain expansion, and we got the core box. This is Lords of Ragnarok. Let's have a conversation around this game as I shake my table, literally shake my table with this stuff over here. So, Lords of Ragnarok is the spiritual successor to Lords of Hellas, a game that I have constantly debated getting rid of uh, over the past, I don't know, over the past how long, uh, a year or not, since I've waited for this game, but also a game I haven't gotten rid of at the same time. Both things are true. And the reason for that is because as much as I think I prefer Lords of Ragnarok to Lords of Hellas, and I think Lords of Hellas is fantastic, but I prefer Lords of Ragnarok, both, both have pros and cons. Lords of Ragnarok kind of forces the competition a bit more, which has a pro and a con to it. But let's get back to that. But either way, this is a spiritual success to Lords of Hellas. Lords of Hellas is a game I really like, but I was like, let's keep this game and let's get rid of Lords of Hellas and keep Lords of Ragnarok. Similar to the way I feel about Endeavor, Deep Sea and Endeavor Age of Sail. And also the way I feel about, you know, Monster Hunter and World of Monster Hunter World Iceborne. And if you're like, Alex, it kind of sounds like you're called the new. Sometimes. Sometimes, yes. Not all the time. I didn't think that Zombicide 2nd Edition was better than regular Zombicide. I didn't think that Zombicide... Well, Zombicide Undead or Alive grew on me, actually. Zombicide Undead or Alive, I started by thinking it was worse, and then you know, kind of grew on me, so there's that, and Marvel Zombies, I kind of, you know, I am mostly Cult of the New, I'm realizing, mostly Cult of the New. Listen, it's not my fault that games take the feedback they've been given over the past who knows how long and incorporate it into the next version. It's almost like if you incorporate player feedback into your next version of the game design, it's almost like that makes it better. But also, I apologize, because inherently, I'm on the channel telling you that the next thing is better, which makes you want the next thing and be dissatisfied with the old thing, so I do apologize in the part that I'm playing with it. Like I said already, this is an unboxing and rambling. If you were just here for the game, you're on the wrong channel. Bent or broken miniatures. Use these miniatures up bent. You can adjust any bent parts manually and they should stay straight. If the damage is beyond is your repair, write us with the order number and pictures of any damaged miniatures and we will send you replacements. All emails should be sent to the following customer address. Contact at gamefound.com. Make sure to include your order number. Thanks. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, we got that over there. We got that. Okay, we got Lords of Ragnarok rulebook over here. We got a rulebook and we got the solar rulebook, which is not my go-to jam, but let's take a look at it just in case. Oh, Awaken Realms and their small text. Their small text. I mean, it's a not the longest rule book, but this is this is a text-heavy solo rule book. But the good news is it's not the main rule book, and the main rule book I'm sure is fantastic. I say I'm sure with the uh, the caveat that Awakening Realms I've sometimes liked their rule books, other times not like their rule books. I like their games a lot, but I have given them flack about their rule books in the past. Let's see over here. We have because the last time I read the rule book, I was reading it from a sheet of paper on how to play the game as opposed to an actual rule book. This is an actual rule book. I will say. Offhand, I already like what's going on here. I say this is somebody who uh, criticized the Wake of the Great Wall rulebook as far as being like image completely lacking and the images they did have look terrible. This looks pretty clear without me actually reading to see how things are, but we got highlighted regions, we got little zoomed in areas, looks clear. Again, tiny, tiny text, just really forcing your eyes. They're like, hey, what if we can have a seven page rulebook? And the font said it was like, it's really a 14 page rulebook. And they're like, what if it was seven pages? And the font said it was like, it's a 14 page rulebook. And they're like, if it's not seven pages, you're fired. And the font said it was like, fine, challenge accepted. So that's what we have over here. I like your Awakening Realms, genuinely. I really like you, but I'm just going to have fun with this. But either way, let's go ahead and dive into it. Preparation, game setup, all that stuff. Wow, we got concepts. And then on page seven, we have preparation, game setup. Joke's on me, it's a 12-page rulebook. Playing the game, Hero Draft, Special Actions. Yeah, the game looks pretty simple to uh, go through the actual core mechanics over here. I, I have not read the rulebook, but I do remember it is a fairly simple game. Not in a bad way. In a way that's similar to a game like Inish or Kemet, where there's a lot going on th strategically, but the actual rulebook doesn't have all that much that you need to worry about. We also have sheets of tokens over here with fun art, because why wouldn't you have fun art? We got, you know, tokens and things and stuff. I'm not going to heavily focus on this. I'll show you some stuff because, you know, let's show you some of the art, the various pieces you have, the heroes and all that. You're going to have your shipboards, I assume. It's been a while since I played this game. We're going to put the map out. The map's cool. The map's cool. We're going to put the map out. Is it double-sided? It is maybe double-sided? It is double-sided. Why is the map double-sided? Now we get to find that out. What is on the other side of the map? Is this going to be like a solo mode or two-player mode situation? Do we have any text that indicates the player count? Not down here we don't, but maybe somewhere over 
over the rainbow where dreams come true this is a vertical map why do you have a vertical oh oh that's gonna be an expansion thing this is an expansion i assume because i'm assuming this is half a map right now the other half goes off into nowhere land which means it might be part of the stretch goals and it might give you a large giant framework of a map either way we're gonna go back to the other side i will say Interesting choice having the kind of secondary map have like the main side as opposed to the default. The, the secondary side is the main map, but also that's because of the stitching over here. If you have the stitching, let me show you this. If you have that like stitching edge, that wouldn't work as well for a map that goes left to right and all that. So I understand why they did it, but also it means that your main map has that, you know, slight edging to it. Am I complaining? No, genuinely not. But like, it is it worth commenting on? Sure, it's worth commenting on. I mean, at this point, I've commented on anything that isn't worth commenting on. So does it really matter at this point? Let's just move this down here. I'm trying not to have these things on top of the things, which means now it's time to go through the things you're all here for, which is the rambling. Not the miniatures, the rambling. But we got these little bags of tokens over here. These are nice tokens. These, what do they do? Do they go into the miniature? I can't remember. Something goes into the base of the miniature, but I don't think it's these tokens. But these are nice. Ooh, those are nice. Those are, those are miniatures. There's one missing. There's two missing. They might not be missing. It depends. I don't know if they're missing. Awaken Realms, can you watch this video and tell me if something's missing? Because I, I genuinely don't know. But we have these tokens over here. These are going to be your player tokens. They're nice. They're little plastic player tokens. Nothing particularly amazing. Nothing particularly bad. They're just, you know, plastic player tokens. And there's bags to put the plastic player tokens in once you get rid of them from their other bags that are non resealable Which, I wonder, I wonder what there is about factory production. You see, because there's a lot of things about eco-friendly, sustainable, environmental things and all this stuff. Awaken Realms, I'm really not in your case. I'm just, I'm just talking. But there's a lot of things about eco-friendly, um, sustainable stuff. And, oh, also disclaimer, I'm sorry, I should have given the disclaimer earlier. Uh, whenever I cover an Awaken Realms product, I uh, work for GameFound, uh, which GameFound does have shared ownership with Awaken Realms. I do not work for Awaken Realms in any way, shape, or form, but there is shared ownership, so take any biases into account as you go through it. But yeah. Anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and these over here. So these, we have these and these. And I wonder what like what process there is. Can you put things in there? Or the machine won't really do that. Because it does feel like a bit like a waste to open a bag like this and then just dump it into another bag. Like, And again, I am not someone who's eco-conscious for the most part. I think it's good to be eco-conscious. It's just not at the forefront of my mind. But I will acknowledge that there are times when I'm like, Ew, it feels a bit like a waste. And I think I've seen Stonemaier games like have resealable bags that you get your components in. I think I've seen them. I happen to not like them, which is a different conversation, but they are resealable bags you can get your components in. Anyways, let's go to here to these and these and open some of this stuff over here. We'll get to the miniatures shortly. But yeah, that's kind of a conversation around uh, eco-friendly stuff. Past that, Awaken Realms and uh, Lords of Ragnarok. And what was I talking about? I don't remember. At one point, there was something I said we'll kind of come back to, and then I forgot to. We're already at that point. That is usual for me in these unboxing and ramblings. But I will say is we're going to punch one of these out. And the reason for that is because we are going to have a conversation here where I show you this board, and I put that in, and oh, that's so nice. I mean, it's just something that fits into a dual-layered board, but it is. It is. Ooh, ooh, ooh double-sided. Double-sided. Why is it double-sided? I don't know. Is it a solo mode? Is it a non-solo mode? I don't know what it is, but it's double-sided, giving you all the maximum flexibility and uh, ways you can adjust things. But that's going to be your player board. You're going to be tracking things in your player board. You're going to have various tokens over here. Let's punch out one of these tokens. We can punch one of these into here. Here's going to be your little token. You can raise your token and adjust these as you go. And they move pretty nicely. You have to just kind of like lift it up a bit, but it's not really a hard part to do. And then you're going to have tokens that go in there. Just lots and lots of tokens in all kinds of different ways. That's going to be what we have as far as things go. So... Let's put these back in here. Let's put these. Let's take a look at these. These are going to be the various gods or bosses you're fighting against. I can't remember. These are the monsters you're controlling. Again, I told you I played this game. I meant it when I said I played this game. This is Lords of Ragnarok. It is um lots of fun. We have Fafnir over here. He's going to be one of the monsters in the region that you can try to control him. As you, I can't remember if you roll a die or if you take an action of a space. It might be an action of a space. I can't remember what you do to control them. We have Fafnir over here. We have Grendel. We have Hati and Skull. We have Troll. We have Huldra. These are all the various things that we saw in the, uh, the original game. Loki. I remember Loki. I did not like him. But lots of lots of various miniatures that are variously in your faces in different ways. And that's where we're going to get the miniatures shortly. But here's the part where I ask Awaken Realms to tell me if something's missing. Because I genuinely don't know. But over here we have two missing spots. We have a missing spot over here, which doesn't really look like it fits anything officially, so it might be just be component-based. And then we have this spot over here, which might be for some sort of stretch goal, but then why, why, if it, there's a stretch goal box, so why, why is that there? It feels like there's a, oh, it's a boat situation, because that's clearly shaped like a boat. Watch, you see, this is going to come over here, that's going to go over there, and it's totally going to not fit. It totally doesn't fit. It genuinely doesn't fit. That does not fit. It looks like it fits a boat, but it does not fit a boat. That was awkward. But anyways, uh, we have miniatures. Let's show you some of the miniatures now that we can go through this over here. And then we have more miniatures and monsters and things to go through. The monsters are actually partially here. I think these are the monsters. These are the leaders. We got leaders. Where are the monsters then? 
monsters are in here. Give me a second here. Give me a second now. I need to get my story straight. We got some monsters in the box, and they look like they hold their weight. This one's gonna take you. Look, let's go. Look, this guy. This is Fafnir, I believe. Fafnir over here. Let's see if it focus. Focus, Fafnir. Focus. Focus on Fafnir. Let's go like that. There we go. Look at that guy. Look at how beautiful that is. That is really, really beautiful. That's what it is. That's one of many. We're going to go through all these very shortly. Let me just put that guy back in the box. And let's take a look at some of these various things. Let's show you like a boat and a clans person. Now, I wonder how this clans person works. This is going to bother me. Huh. There's a way that these track damage. But where? Oh, oh, I found it. Oh, oh, dear Lord. Oh, that's interesting. Ooh. Okay, give me a second. Sorry. Ah, uh, do I want to do this? I'm going to do this now. I'm going to regret doing this now, but I'm going to do this now. I should not do this now. So these are interesting miniatures. And I remember commenting on these miniatures at the time, but basically, if you look over here, you can see how that miniature kind of has this weird base. But what goes on that base? What are we going to do with that information? And the answer is we're going to look at this number thing. Oh, Awaken Realms, you're clever. I should have... I should have read the updates. I should have read the updates. So we're going to pull this off over here. I'm assuming that they showed this in an update somewhere. I don't know if they did, but I'm assuming they did. Oh, that is beautiful. Okay, you see? You see, I, I gave you flack the first half, but uh, this is this is nice. This is nice. So this may have been shown in an update, in which case I should read more updates. But what I will say is, uh, in the original prototype, they had these kind of bases. And the goal of the bases was that they would show the health of a miniature. So you can have a dial on the miniature. That's very cool. And I said, that's great. It's a very cool concept. There's one small problem with it. I don't know the health of half the miniatures on the board. And if I even pick up the miniature to look, I'm telling you that I'm considering like attacking that region in some way, shape, or form, which is terrible. It's terrible. It's bad game design. I don't like that. And Awakening Realms is like, what if, what if we had a miniature that has three different sides to the base? So you can see five, five, and five. And what if when we turn the dial to a four, to a six over there, it's six, six, and six. And the reverse is true as well. If we turn it to a, like a, you know, a two over here, the miniature has two health. Well, it's showing two health on all the bases. So now when you have it on the board over here, no matter which angle you are, you might help to see it from the camera because that's just a distance thing. Let's try to put it over here. If we put it over here, can you see from there, from the camera, like, is that a two? Because I can't talk about the camera, but I can tell you that from my perception as a viewer over here, I can see that too. I like it. I like it. Very, very innovative, very clever. Let's go ahead and show you some of the miniatures now because I, I just got too distracted by that. So let's show you some of the basic miniatures here. We're going to show you all the various things. Let's show you this over there. There we go. These are nice, sun-dropped, shaded. Very, very cool. You will obviously have to do some uh, homework as far as putting your bases into the miniatures. That is definitely true. But past that, we got ships. We got. I'm going to show you one ship. They're all the same for all the different sculpts. I'm not going to try to show you different ships, but I will show you every other miniature other than that. I'm just not going to show you the same thing twice. That's what I'm not going to do, even if it's a different color, cool as it might be. But anyways, this is going to be that. Now, one thing one thing worth mentioning, because I just mentioned I gave this game a 5 out of 5. I gave this game a 5 out of 5 before I worked for GameFound. Take that into account. I didn't know I had a job coming at all in any way, shape, or form. Apparently, I should give more games 5 out of 5, so it might result in job offers. I don't, I don't think so. I'm joking. I'm joking. But what I will say is I also I also had like second thoughts about this because like my review at the time I think I got a little bit of pushback on it which I think is reasonable I think it's reasonable to be a pushback because we got another miniature here let's show you one of some of these let's show you this one and come back the reason the pushback I think is reasonable is I both complained about a lot of things in the game and gave it a five out of five which by the way is a regular problem with reviewing games I'll spend a lot of time telling you the issues and then give it a high rating and you're like you spent a lot of time on the issues and I'm like actually when I dislike a game I usually spend more time on the issues because I want it I want you to understand all the potential problems if I'm going to rate a game highly because yes I love it but like you should know everything because if I give it a 5 out of 5 and I don't point out every single problem along the way you have a reasonable complaint against me when you get that game down the road you're like you didn't say that I couldn't see the bases and I kind of part of the bases like I said the bases are like a kind of thing I assume they'll fix it and address it but it was a five out of five with issues some of those issues were related to being a prototype and I was like I think a bunch of these things will be fixed and so five out of five I retroactively kind of took it back and said hey fine I'll temporarily hold back the rating to a certain extent until it's an actual final game but it doesn't stop the video from being up there which is a practical problem in life once you say it on the internet unless I take it down which I don't feel strong enough to take on the video I'm willing to take on a video if I need to but I don't feel that's a strong enough case to do so. I feel strongly about this game. I really like this game. I'm excited to play this game and to dive into it. But ultimately, I, I mean, I agree that I was rating a prototype that had a lot of prototype issues. It's kind of like how I always feel compelled to talk about rule books that were bad when talking about prototypes. And part of that, and, and designers don't love it. Like when a guy sends me a game, they're like, of course it's a bad rule book. It's like a bunch of pages in Microsoft Doc with no images. It's a prototype. Like, what do you expect? And I understand the frustration. But give me a second while I show you some miniatures. Here we go. Here we go over here. Oh, 
There we go. Look at these. These are nice. I like these. They're very cool. Sundrop's always cool. Awakened Realms in general makes good prototypes, so I'm more more interested in the stuff I haven't seen yet. Which some of these I don't think I did actually. I could be wrong. Some of these I recognize. Some of them not so much. Going back to the rulebook conversation. So I respect the fact that the designer might not like when I point out a prototype issue. I did a whole video with James Hudson about this one time, and I, I respect it, genuinely. How can you publicly rate a thing that is in the middle of production? The flip side is, I have to tell you, if, if you're making the purchasing decision doing the middle of production, and if you send me the game to cover, I'm going to give you all the caveats, even if it might be changed, even if I expect the rulebook to be better. Because down the road, if you get a game, and you're like, this rulebook's terrible, why didn't Board Game Co. say anything? You have a legitimate complaint. Versus if I say, hey, bad rulebook, I assume it gets better, and the rulebook's not better, I gave the caveat, I gave the warning, like, you know, who knows what happens. And that is a, a real problem about the nature of reviewing things that are in process. I want you to walk in as well-informed as possible. I'll like what I like, and I'll give the ratings that I, that I give, but I'm going to try to make sure that you understand as much as possible so you can make the best purchasing decision that you can. Does it mean that you'll always agree with me? No. Does it mean that I'll let you down sometimes? Absolutely. Are you still watching me even though I let you down? Thank you. I appreciate it. But... I'm just going to do the best I can, managing to try to juggle different facets, trying to juggle my own personal excitement for a game, trying to juggle being balanced on and critical, trying to talk about even like this this video over here, like, I don't mind talking about the eco-friendly production stuff, even if like Work and Realms is like, hey, um, Alex, could you could you not just bring up unnecessary things that we don't want to have to like find ourselves down a rabbit hole, we don't want 17 people commenting, hey, Work and Realms, can you look into the production stuff? Maybe. I'm not saying that's their stance. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like, you, you never really know. But uh, I... I try to balance things, and I don't always do it correctly, but I try to balance things as well as I can, and my goal always is to to be excited when I'm excited, I don't want to hide it from you, but to be critical or talk realistically about things when there's what to be critical or talk realistically about. These are, are cool miniatures, I can't help you with that. The gameplay, that's a different conversation, but these are cool miniatures, look at this. Solid Awakened Realms miniatures over here. This is very cool, look at these guys, look at the little doggo, look at the little doggo, it's adorable. It is adorable. Anyways, that's going to be that over there. That's going to be that over there. Okay, we're going to pull out two more before we go into the big overwrought gods. Which, by the way, I kind of disagree with some people who uh, had opinions on that. We're going to talk about that in a second. But over here, you got these two. Let's show you. Let's show you. Did I show you Loki? I don't even remember if I showed you Loki. There, go, go. Come on, focus, focus. This is a board problem. I made the mistake of showing you the board. And now that because of that, there we go. Because of that, it's kind of like, hey, there's text on the board. Let's f let's focus on the text of the board as opposed to let's focus on the giant thing that you're putting in front of the camera. But sometimes it does focus. This, by the way, this kind of sculpts. This is why I want Awaken Realms to make a Bioshock game. Will they ever make a Bioshock game? No idea. They are making a Stalker game. Did you know that? Did you know that they're making a Stalker game? Like the IP Stalker, the video game. If you didn't know that, link. Go to, I'm not gonna link down below. It's a different video. Go to GameFound and uh, pop in Stalker. Type in Stalker. And if it doesn't work, type in s dot t dot a dot l dot k dot e dot r dot. One of those two things should work. Ideally both. Ideally both. Anyways, the gods. So, there was a conversation around the original game where most of the time you'd be building these very cool gods that you didn't get to see the very cool god for most of the time because you assemble these gods as you build them. And so you finally got to see parts of a full god on the board at the very end of the game. And that was the thing. The space over here is not broken. This base is you assembling the base. First you put the base down, then you take the legs, which I will hopefully not break. I'm trying not to break things as I pull this up. Hold up, hold up. Let's just try to pull. Okay, I don't want to break things. We got a head over here that I can pull off. Nope, doesn't want to come out. I don't want to... Well, I'm not going to do more than this, but I will do this much. I don't even know if I could do more than this. This disassembles in different components. And that's intentional, so that you can go ahead and you can put this down over here. You can take this guy over here, and you can put him down like so onto this base. There we go. Now he's on the base, you see? You're slowly assembling the monument. And that's a gameplay aspect that you're assembling it. And Awakened Realms is like, but do you want the full monument on the board instead? And like some sort of tracker to show your assembly. That way you can have the full, cool giant miniature on the board the entire time. And I was like, a million times yes. And everyone else was like, nope, 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 nope. We'd rather build it up slowly but surely. And I respect that. I do. But I also disagree with it. Meaning I respect the difference of opinion while having my own difference of opinion. Anyways, that's god number one. God number two is fell apart. Broken miniatures that is what it is. It's not broken. It's not broken. See previous notes about the various miniatures. Oh, and this guy. That's funny. This guy. Remember this guy? Oh, we'll talk about this guy in a second. So, we got this one over here, who is, again, not focusing. Let's go back to it. There we go. Look at it. Look at it. That's what we got over there. And then, we got 
lastly, we have this guy who has been a uh, affectionately named, you know, kicked in the nuts guy. Like, but really, look at him, and tell me you don't like. Well, if you can focus, tell me you don't kind of see that pose. Now he's kind of got a slight inwards kick, a little bit of an inwards bow. Looks a drop like he's kicked in the nuts. I don't know if they addressed or fixed the miniature at all. Not fixed, but like people have that opinion. I don't know if they in any way they changed it, but if they did, I can still see the kick in the nuts pose. And then we have cards, which I won't show because like, let's talk about it. But let's talk about the game. Let's talk about the game. This is a game which you're trying to win from a variety of win conditions. You can take down monsters. You can get a uh, placement in temples. You can just get control of areas. That's the main core engine of the goal. Uh, Lords of Ragnarok is, and that's a core that's similar to uh, Lords of Hellas as well. Lots of changes were made between the systems though. One of the big changes is just the way the map works. It's much more connected. And it made it almost more similar to a Blood Rage kind of style of vibe, which might be the conversation I was trying to come back to earlier. I don't remember. And that Blood Rage style vibe does mean that to a certain extent, this game is better but competing against a game like Blood Rage, whereas Lords of Hellas felt very different to a game like Blood Rage. That is the pro and con of the situation and why I'm kind of like, do I need both? I don't think so. Do I, am I ready to get rid of the other one? Not yet, because I think this is better, but better competing with another title that I like more is a, is a complicated conversation. It is complicated. And so over here, we got these cards over here. These are going to be your monster attacks. There we go. Let's flip it this way. Build monuments, your little room cleaning thingies. You got the monster draws four cards, vicious attack. The monster draws two cards. Recall over here, all these different things. Whole decks of cards. I'm not going to go through everything, but typical Awakened Realms art. Very compelling, very engaging, and refusing to focus. Come on, there we go. There we go. That's very. Look at that. Look at that card. That's like shiny. I like it. But, anyways, I'm not going to go through all the cards right now. I'm not going to bother. We'll do all that later because we still got stretch goal boxes to go through. And also, we got these little guys who I. They go into the bases of the monuments. I have to remember. Priests, I think they are. They go into the base of the monuments in the board. So that those giant monuments that had two little circles in it, these guys show your like presence in them and you're benefiting from their favor or something like that. Again, I, I both have played the game and it was a year and a half ago. And so I need to play the game more to uh, fully remember all the ways this is. It's also more complicated because I remember the systems and I'm trying to remember all the differences between the two systems. I also think I probably put this in. I didn't do this right. I didn't do this right. I accidentally put the first bird on before I put the piece in the box. And now I did it right now. I did it right now. We're going to put it back in the box. Okay. Let's do this here. Let's do this here. Let's put this in. Let's put the board in first. Let's grab the board. We're going to go to the train stuff shortly and then the stretch goals box and have all these fun little things and maybe talk more about the game. But yeah, it's a lot of a lot of uh, building things up in the game. You're trying to build up your various tracks. You have different tracks in the game. Again, a little similar to Blood Rage in that sense while being very different in its own right. Uh, I, it almost feels like they took Lords of Hellas and said, how can we com address the few complaints people had? Not few complaints. There were complaints. Address the complaints people had, but also make it a drop more like Blood Rage because like that's a very popular game. That may or may not have been the design process. Whatever it was, it worked. It resulted in a game that feels more conflict driven so the biggest complaint i had against it is that it does to a certain small extent take away from some of the unique feel that lords of hellas has to a certain small extent by making it almost a bit more of a battlefield it lost a drop of the uniqueness but it did make for a better game which is the complicated part but like i don't know it's complicated it's complicated let's do the train expansion and then we'll talk about the um stretch goal box and again, missing a few things here, but we'll do what we gotta do over here. Not a ton of stuff, honestly. Terrain expansion, not that exciting. I mean, it's nice, but it's like, here, I'll show you. We got some buildings over here. This entire box here is two buildings. So let's show you those two buildings. And now there's no map, we should focus fairly quickly. These are gonna be your temples that go on the board. These are gonna be like your war or recruitment zones, I think. I can't remember exactly. I feel like you have to have like a recruitment zone type area. The building could be wrong, I think. And some of these start on the board, if I recall correctly. Like, you're placing you're placing them on the board as a visual representation of the thing that's already on the board, if I recall correctly. I'm sorry. I, I Again, I really have played this game. I think there's a film playthrough of me playing this game, so I know that. Either way, um, we got these over here. These are some cool things over here. We're not going to show you everything. Look at those hands. Look at those hands. Look at those hands crawling up from the dirt and the mud and the ground and trying to... Uh, yeah. Anyways, there's that over there. These are going to go back in or not go back in? Oh, they go in like that? No. How does this go? Did I choose the wrong... You know what? Maybe I chose the wrong... I put them in the wrong containers. I don't know how I did that, but I did that. I'll show you two more and then call it on this, because honestly, these are cool, but they're... I want to get to the stretch goals box. So here we go. You got these over here. Again, more more of these things over here. Honestly, I'm saying this now with great trepidation and embarrassment. I don't remember at all what those are. I have no idea what they are. Like, I know we have the temples, and we have the, like, barracks type area. Like, the recruitment zones, almost. But I have no idea what they are. They are... Oh, they're the, the, the Muspelheim, I'll fame. They're just, I think they're just the base on the board. They start on the board. Yeah, they just start... I think they just start on the board in the various corners. 
Utgard, Valheim, Niflheim. Yeah, I think so. I could be wrong, but I think so. Anyways, that's going to cover this, which means we have one box left, and it is the Stretch Goal box, which to me is the most exciting because it's all the miniatures I haven't seen yet. But this is going to be the Lords of Ragnarok Stretch Goals with a Stretch Goal rulebook. Ooh, look at this short rulebook. It is also in 0.3, you know, font size, but it does have a five-flare expansion. It has the Children of the Loki expansion, the Gardens of Bifast, the Nidavellir, other Stretch Goal expansions. Does it have a board is the question. It does have a board. The other side of the board is over here. What does it do? I don't know. It's the Five Flare expansion, and it goes along the edge of your board to expand this map like so, so you can play this game with five players, which is cool. Would I play with five players? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Inish is a game that had a five player expansion that I think is good. I think I think I still prefer Inish with four, but at five players, I think it works great. Blood Rage, I usually go to four. If I have five, I'm going to pull out El Grande. Even Kemet, I prefer at four. Kemet runs long at five. Lots of these games can run long at five. I'm going to play El Grande at, four, at five players. So I'm happy I have the five player expansion, just in case for that one time. But I don't, I don't think I'm going to be using it. we got more priests and more um, boats and things. You're going to see a second boat now, because I want to show you a second miniature. Look at that. Oh, and that bright yellow actually shows up nicely, too. Which usually, fun fact, usually bright yellow, or bright red for that matter, doesn't show up nicely on camera. I'm wondering if the fact that it's sun-dropped means the light is being caught into the darkness instead of being caught into the model itself, and therefore it shows up nicely on camera. I'm wondering that, genuinely. Like, I think that might be a thing, because usually more neonish colors don't show up in, um, don't show up well on camera. So, let's go ahead and flip this over and see what we got. We got this, we got that, and that, and that. And we have these. We got Jormangadur, or something like that. We have Fenrir, which seems completely reasonable, and we have the Kraken. Again, see what I said earlier about wanting a um, Bioshock game from Awakened Realms. That'd be great. Thank you very much, Awakened Realms. I appreciate you. Uh, the Stalker game. Stalker's not an IP that I actually watched at all. Like, I didn't... I don't not watch. I, if I recall correctly, I played Stalker once for, like, three hours. If I recall correctly. I don't remember when. don't remember how. But I remember... I kind of remember, like, it's very, very gray. It's like, it's equivalent of everyone complaining about uh, too much beige in board games. Stalker is too much beige in video games. And there's like a radiation meter and then past that is a first person shooter. That's all I really remember with the game. If that sounds like Stalker, then I'm right. If it doesn't sound like Stalker, I'm probably wrong. There might have been dogs. I'm assuming they were dogs. What do we have here? No idea. They're various cards. Don't remember what any of visual... Oh, these are fun. Oh, it's fun to get these. Yeah, these are the upgrade cards. Oh my gosh, I am remembering... It's been so long since I played Lord of, Lords of Hellas or Lords of Ragnarok that I am forgetting just how much I like this game. The upgrading, the tableau building, it's so cool. Like, you get the temples to a certain point, you build, you get these cool cards. Oh my gosh. And then we got some, like, weapon cards. All these things over here. These are going to be the things you use in combat. Building from your own unique deck, usually. I don't actually remember if the decks are unique or symmetrical. But either way, building from those unique or symmetrical decks. Put these cards over here, these cards over here. And let's show you the various fun thingies. So, we have our various miniatures and models over here. We're going to show you these. These are these guys over here. Look at that. Look at that. And then we're going to show you more because we still have more. We have, like, several more, in fact. We have some more heroes. We have Fenrir. Oh, he's cool. He's cool. I remember seeing the skull for that on the page. I remember seeing it. This is very cool. This guy has a gigantic arrow. Oh, it's a trio of three arrows. I see that now. Okay. So, let's show you this guy first and then show you the gigantic arrow or trio of three. This is a fun little spider arachnid type person. And then we have this guy, who you can kind of see like it's like that arrow's too big until you go really, really close and you're like, oh, it's three arrows notched against the thing. Although that bow is like pulled back weirdly too. That bow is like a very high top arc and a very like weird, look, look at this, look at this, look where the arrows are. That bow goes way too high and not low enough. It's interesting. I don't know what to make of it. I don't know if that's a very specific type of bow or just a, it's interesting. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and show you, I'm going to show you Fenrir last because I think Fenrir is very cool. Is it actually Fenrir? I don't remember. I don't remember if it's Fenrir or not. Uh, Fenrir. Yeah, it's definitely Fenrir. Okay. It's a giant dog with a thing in its mouth. Anyways, got this guy over here. Look at this giant guy. These are very cool, by the way. These are genuinely very cool. We got one more here who has completely fallen apart. Emotionally, intellectually, uh, physically. Okay. I'm going to put this in play. And we're going to put this in play. And then we're going to go ahead. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'll show you. I'll show you. Okay. So we have this model over here. Okay. And giant axe, which is great. But then as you turn the model around, look at that like arachnid style back. That is very cool. That is what, like, that's when I made the noise. I was like, oh, because like that was, that was not expecting that. 
And giant scythe, by the way. I'm impressed with her upper body strength. Anyways, lastly, now nah, I actually think that should have been last. I'm sorry, Fenrir's going to be anticlimactic by comparison. But we have Fenrir over here. It's going to be this guy with a giant thing in his mouth. Very, very cool. And that's going to be your uh, pre-production copy of... I think it's pre-production. It's just not in Shrink, is all I know. It's not in Shrink. That's going to be your unboxing and rambling of Awakened Realms, the Stretch Goals, and the Terrain Expansion. I need to hunt down the Sea of Ages Expansion. I need to find about it, that. And I think there's some other things, too, as far as, like, Deluxe Fight tokens and stuff. But, yeah. This is a fun game. This is a game I really enjoyed. Had a lot of fun with. Highly recommend. If you like area control games, I think this is a game worth picking up. I wonder if there's other stuff in the second wave. Is this two-way shipping? Did Awakened Realms do two-way shipping in this one? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Anyways, that has been your unboxing and rambling of Lords of Ragnarok. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate all of you. And as always, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And until next time, I hope you have a good one.